Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. All the tender platitudes about the innocence of childhood are uttered by grown-ups. As any realistically observant parent can tell you, small children are thieves, liars, and potential murderers. And no grown-up can hope to understand the savage jungle in which the little one struggles to exist. There is no line of communication. Words are useless. Only with love, discipline, and luck can the helpless parent hope to lead the bewildered child toward the grown-up world where things are not always what they seem. But what if the parents were to be denied that opportunity? What if the innocent little children were to take over the world at five o'clock some quiet summer afternoon? Hmm? Listen, Evelyn Rudy stars in Ray Bradbury's chilling story of childhood, Zero Hour, which begins in just a moment. In what form can an act of military heroism be acknowledged? In one example, the form is a rectangular blue ribbon set in a gold-colored metal frame of laurel leaves, worn centered over the right breast pocket of the uniform. A bronze oak leaf cluster may be affixed to the ribbon for each subsequent award of the same decoration. This is the emblem of the Distinguished Unit Citation, awarded to units of our armed forces and those of our allies for extraordinary heroism in action against an armed enemy. One of America's newer military decorations, it is designated to recognize activity on or after December 7, 1941. The Distinguished Unit Campaign streamer is blue, with the name of the cited action embroidered in white. To be eligible for this citation, the degree of heroism required is the same as that which, in an individual, would warrant the presentation of our second highest award for valor, the Distinguished Service Cross. The Distinguished Unit emblem may be worn permanently by all those involved in the cited action, but for those individuals joining the unit later, the emblem may be worn only for the duration of their assignment. Both as individuals and as members of military units, America's servicemen have proved themselves worthy of medals and worthy of admiration by their countrymen. And now, Zero Hour, starring Evelyn Rudy, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. What a game. Such excitement the children hadn't known in their whole lives. Mink talked earnestly to someone near the rose bush, though no one was there. And then the two little girls shouting and laughing at each other. Such fun, such tremendous joy. It was all Mink's mother could do to get her grimy and excited daughter into lunch. Goodness, Mink, I've never heard such a racket out in the garden. What are you and Anna up to? The most exciting game ever, just ever. Oh, and what's the name of the game? Invasion. Invasion? Well, Invasion will just have to wait until you've eaten your lunch properly. Now slow down, young lady, do you hear me? Can't. Drill's waiting for me. Drill? Well, what a peculiar name. Is he a new boy in the neighborhood, dear? He's new, all right. I don't think I've seen him. Which one is Drill? Oh, he's just around. I've got to go now, Mom, if we're going to have the invasion. You finish your milk, miss. Now, who's invading what? The Martians are invading the Earth. Oh, I see. And Drill's a Martian, hmm? I think so. He's had a very hard time getting here. I should imagine. They couldn't figure out a way to attack Earth. How to get in or something. And Drill says they have to do it by surprise. And even get help from your enemy. Oh, a fifth column. Yes. And all this time, they haven't been able to figure out how to attack. Until one day, they thought of children. Well, that was bright of them. And they thought of how grown-ups are so busy, they never look under rose bushes or on lawns. That's where Drill is now, under the rose bush? Mm-hmm. <laughs> With all his friends, too. And he says there's something about kids under 11 with imagination. It's real funny to hear Drill talk. It must be. Well, you can run along now, so you can have your invasion before dark. Bath tonight, school tomorrow, you know. 
Drill says I won't have to take any more baths. Oh, he does, does he? And we can stay up till 10 o'clock. Well, your friend Mr. Drill better mind his P's and Q's or I'm going to call up his mother. That's just it. Drill says you're dangerous because you don't believe in Martians. Just like you think Drill's a kid. Well, he's not. And they're going to let us run the world when they get in. All of us kids. And I might even be queen. Well, that's nice, dear. Now run along. Mom? What is it, dear? Mom, when the invasion comes, we'll have to get rid of you and Daddy. But I'll be sure it won't hurt very much. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello? Hello, Mary. Helen. How are you? Well, how nice. Are you in town? No, I'm up home in Plainfield. I was just thinking of you. Thought I'd call. Well, it's long distance, though. You shouldn't. Oh, I can afford three minutes. How's Henry? Oh, fine. And Bill? Just fine. What about me? Oh, wonderful. Noisier than ever. She's got a new game now. It's taken the place of hopscotch. Invasion. Is she playing that, too? Mm-hmm. Are yours? Same thing. Some kind of geometric jacks, I suppose. <laughs> Isn't it a scream? All the kids their age are playing it up here. Timmy's got a crush on some guy named, um, Drill. I think that's what it is. Must be a new password. Mink likes him, too. I didn't know it had got to your part of the world. Word of mouth, I suppose. You know kids. Oh, sure. Funniest thing, I got a letter from my sister in Boston. She says her kids are playing it, too, sweeping the country. Well, I wonder where they learned it. Well, don't ask me. All I know is what Timmy told me at lunch. Zero hours at five o'clock. When? Five o'clock today. That's when the invasion's going to be. These kids and their imagination. Oh, I wanted and to... And they talk a little more. Schoolgirl friends. So excited about it. Casual woman talk, but Mrs. Morris was thoughtful. And it's fun. She was thinking oh, of other things. Helen, I'm so glad. Of adults, of little children with imagination, rose bushes, and their unseen friend I'm named Drill... And she thought of how much she'd forgotten about being a child. And she wondered about Mink. And all the kids everywhere who at that moment were playing Invasion. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe. 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 Joseph. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. I'm up. Pour the coffee. I'll be right in. Relax. It's three in the morning. Huh? I said relax. It's three in the morning. I was relaxed. Daphne, why did you wake me up? Well, I was just wondering what happened to our savings bonds. You were what? I had a dream. I dreamed you lost all of your money and all we had left were our savings bonds. I see. So I just wanted to make sure they were all all right. They're all right. They're with the other important papers. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, I just don't want anything to happen to them. Savings bonds are the most secure form of investment. Why, the whole faith and credit of the United States stand behind those bonds of ours. Uh Uh-huh. So they're even better than dollars in your pocket because the government stands behind them and protects them. Uh Uh-huh. And they protect us too, Joe. Every bond is an investment in our country, in our security and freedoms. Joe? Well, how about that? He feels so secure he went back to sleep. Mm. Good night, darling. And now, starring Evelyn Rudy, Act Two of Zero Hour. Inside the Morris house, an hour drowsed by. While all across the town in other gardens and other backyards, little children were excitedly playing a game, talking to rose bushes and grass lawns, trees and shrubs. Even children in apartment houses high in the air, conferring with potted plants, cactus and ivy. Mrs. Morris had finished her mending and gone back to the kitchen when Mink burst in. Hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Can I have a glass of water? Oh, of course. I'll get it. Pi R squared, 47. 
right over 56 to the 7th degree. What, it's, dear? Oh, oh, nothing, Mom. Here's your water. Thanks. How are things going? Hmm? The invasion. Oh, that. Yes, yeah, that. Almost finished. Drill says we should be ready on time. Five o'clock? That's right. How did you know? Well, Helen called me from Plainfield. She says Timmy's playing it, too. Hey, that's keen. I guess all the kids are, aren't they? No, not all of them. Not guys like Jill Essling and Jimmy Woods. They're growing up. They make fun of us. They're worse than parents. Well, we'll get rid of them. Drill says it's okay to kill them, too. Now, I don't like that kind of talk, Mink. Do you hear me? I don't like it at all. Oh, Mom. I mean it. You keep on that way and there's no more playing. You'll have to tell Anna to go home and you'll just stay inside until bedtime. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Thanks for the water, Mom. Mink. Uh-huh? What did those numbers mean? What numbers? Those numbers you were saying to yourself a minute ago. Oh, that. There are things we have to do to get Drill and his friends out. That's all. Look, dear, why don't you and Anna go down to the drugstore and get yourself some ice cream? You don't have to use your allowance. I'll give you the money. Haven't got time, Mom. Thanks. Well, I never thought I'd hear you say that. I gotta go now, Mom. Now, wait a minute. Mink, I want you to tell me the truth. What is this invasion silliness? It isn't silly. It's... It's just a game, that's all. We're just playing at invasion, Mom. Excuse me, I've got to get back now. See you later. Mrs. Morris was disturbed. She wasn't sure why, but because she was disturbed, she did something she didn't usually do. She called her husband at the office. Hello, dear. Hello, Henry. I'm sorry to bother you, but Miss Maxson said you weren't busy. Well, not too. I should be able to get home early today. Is everything all right? Yes. Are you all right? Fine. Ming? She's... Henry. What, dear? Oh, nothing. I just felt like talking to you for a minute, that's all. Listen, are you sure you're all right? Yes. Mink been getting on your nerves? No, not really. She's playing outside. She's fine. Honey, is something wrong? Well, no, I told you. I, I was thinking about you and I wanted to talk, that's all. What time do you think you'll be home? Oh, about five, maybe a little earlier. Five? Oh. Hey, what do you mean, oh? Well, I was just thinking... Oh, it, it's nothing, really. Goodbye, dear. You are okay, aren't you? Yes, I'm fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Another hour passed, and it was half past four. Outside, it was quiet. The two little girls more intent than ever upon the endless movement of their game. Mrs. Morris watched from the window, and she had never known Mink to have such powers of concentration. She had turned on the radio and sat drinking a cup of coffee, turning over her thoughts. Children. Children. Love and hate, side by side. Sometimes children love you and hate you, all in half a second. Strange children. Do they ever forget or forgive the whippings and the harsh, strict words of command? I wonder. I wonder. How can you forget or forgive those over and above you? Those tall, silly dictators. Those parents. Mom! Uh, what is it, dear? Have we got a piece of lead pipe and a hammer? Well, I don't know. There might be in the garage. What do you want them for? Oh, we just need them. Well, if you tell me, I can go I and... I can get them. Thanks, Mom. Is something wrong? Yes. Drill's stuck halfway. If we could get him all the way through, it'd be easier. Then all the others could come through after him. Well, can I help? Thanks, Mom. I can do it. Well, you better hurry, Mink. I want you to take your bath before your father comes home. All right. He's coming home early and... Mink? Mink? Mink had disappeared behind the shrubs. And Mrs. Morris knew it was ridiculous to make an issue of it. And besides, what was the issue? Invasion? Drill? Zero hour? Just a child's game. Time passed. A curious waiting silence came upon the street, deepening. Then from the living room, Mrs. Morris heard... Five o'clock, zero hour. 
It had come. And now it had gone. But was the clock right? And Mrs. Morris, knowing how foolish it was, knowing it was five o'clock, went to the phone and dialed. Oh, silly. Silly. The time is 4.54 and 20 seconds. We continue with the third act of Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO possesses a shield of well-equipped, highly trained land and sea forces, plus tactical air support and special units. The NATO shield extends from north of Norway to the eastern mountains of Antolia in Asian Turkey. Complete disposition of forces is covered by a radar warning system plus a perfected network of telecommunications enabling the supreme commander to direct operations with extreme rapidity over a 2,000 mile front. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the programs and objectives of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now... Starring Evelyn Rudy, Act Three of Zero Hour. Four fifty four and twenty seconds. And Mrs. Morris knew that it wasn't as silly as she had thought, because it wasn't five o'clock yet. Not zero hour yet. And then she heard the car drive in. And her husband greeting her daughter. Hi, Meg. Hi, Daddy. How's it going? Fine. Well, you got a kiss for me? I haven't got time now, Daddy. Now, that's a nice thing. What are you doing? We're playing Invasion. Swell. Your mother in the house? Yes. Okay, be good. I will. Zero hour in a few minutes, Daddy. All right, I'll be ready. <laughs> Mary? I'm in the living room, dear. Oh. Hi. Hi. Our daughter didn't have time for a kiss. How about you? <laughs> Hard day? Ooh, not particularly. Would you like a cocktail? You read my mind. Martini? Perfect. Anything exciting happen today? No. Oh, Helen called. Oh? From Plainfield. I told her she was crazy, but she just felt like calling. Like you calling me this afternoon, huh? Crazy, huh? What was that all about? I told you, I wanted to. Uh, incidentally, what's this new game the kids are playing? Invasion? That's a nice, depressing thought. Is Mick all right? Come to think of it, she looked kind of funny. She's all right. What time is it, Henry? Oh, a couple minutes after five? Why? Well, no, the clock's wrong. By your watch. Hmm? Oh, uh, I've got two minutes, too. I'm probably slow. You got something on the stove? No. Just wondered. Honey, I... Hey, look at me. Now, what's the matter? Nothing, really. Now, listen. Really? To... Mink's been up to something. Oh, of course not. Well, then what? Well, I guess I'm just a little tired and upset, that's all. You want to go out for dinner? No, I've got steak in the icebox. I'll tell you what, I'll barbecue it. How'd that be? Fine. What was that? What? I thought I heard something. I didn't. Must have been imagining it. Boy, you are jumpy. Why don't you have a drink? It'll do you good. No, I don't want one. What time is it now? Mary, what is this? I mean it. Now, something's wrong, and I want to know. Oh, it's silly. It's, it's just silly. I'm on edge, that's all. Mary, there's... I am. I don't like it. Now, that kid's done something, hasn't she? I'm going to get her in No, here. Henry, please don't. She hasn't. It's, it's nothing at all. I just... What's that? I don't know. Those kids haven't got anything dangerous out there, have they? I noticed a lot of junk lying around. It was a game. She wouldn't have done it herself. They've made her do it. What the devil you is it? You better go out and tell them to stop playing now. It's after five. You tell Mink to put off the invasion till tomorrow. Tell her. What are they up to? I'd better take a look. Mink? Mink! Good Lord, it's outside there. No. No, it's upstairs. I know it. 
in the attic. That's where it is. Mary, Mary, it's not up there. It's outside. It's in the attic. That's where it is. Her mind had worked that quickly. Any excuse to get her husband away from the outside to get him upstairs to the attic in time. And outside, there were more eerie explosions. And they could hear the children screaming with delight. It's not in the attic. It's outside. The mink's out there. Now, what's the matter with you? Oh, no, I'll show you. Hurry. Get it right quick. <laughs> now, we're safe until tonight. Maybe we can sneak out later. Maybe we can escape. Are you crazy? Why'd you throw the key away? For heaven's sake, the kid's out there. You oh, want her to get hurt? You don't know. You don't. We've got to stay here. We've got to. You've got to stay here with me. I don't know how I can get out. Where's that light switch? Shh. Quiet. Please be quiet. They'll hear us. They'll find us. Help me, please. There's a noise again. It's in the house now, Mary. Mary, what is this? <laughs> What's happening? Now, you know. Answer me. No. Stop that, Mary. Somebody's downstairs. Now, who's down there? Who? Oh, no, 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 no. Please, please. Be Mary. Quiet. They might go away. Please. And between his wife's terror and the electric coming from below, Mr. Morris felt a great fear. They trembled together in silence in the attic. Mr. and Mrs. Morris, parents of the little girl named Link. Then they heard steps coming up the stairs. And a voice. Mommy? Daddy? Where are you? And a queer, cold light became visible under the door crack. A strange odor in the alien sound of eagerness in Mink's voice was almost more than they could bear. Mommy? Daddy? And another sound. And the lock to the attic door melted. Mink. Mink, with bright little eyes and tousled hair, peered inside. And behind her, tall, wavering blue shadows. Frightful shadows. Suspense, in which Evelyn Rudy starred in William N. Robeson's production of Zero Hour, written by Ray Bradbury, and adapted for suspense by Anthony Ellis. Supporting Evelyn Rudy in Zero Hour were Lillian Bayef, Ellen Morgan, Carl Swenson, and Vic Perrin. Listen. Listen again next week, when we return with Ted Reed, starring in a first radio play about the Beat Generation. Its subject... Murder. Its title, Like Man, Somebody Dig Me. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.